Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. From live in my office, welcome to this incredibly well-furnished room. For those of you guys that are listening to this on some audio channel, Spotify or Apple or whatever, you can't see this well-furnished room, but if you look at the picture, there's one lamp and part of a painting. So we have a lot of work yet to do here in this gorgeous house of ours, but I am coming to you live from, from my house. It is just as a timestamp. We're right in the middle of the coronavirus, and I called this week's episode Antidotes to Uncertainty. So as you guys know, there's a lot of shit going on in the world right now. Like for you guys listening in the future, I'm going to be really interested to know how this all plays out um, and what we, you know, end up being, knowing, perceiving, and receiving as a result of it. But right in the middle of it, there's a lot of uncertainty. And, and the reality is that this virus is changing everything. It's changing markets. It's changing jobs. It's changing lives. It's changing people that are living, people that are dying. It's changing everything. And so yesterday when I, I was on Facebook just asking about, you know, what I could talk about, there was a few people that, you know, put in a comment about, you know, what do we, how do we, how do we deal with all the uncertainty? And so I have, hey, Rita, hi, Trevor, and hey, you guys, and Trevor, I got your email. I don't know if I'm speaking about that today, but I appreciate you emailing in. <laughs> Maybe there's a private session in there somewhere. Hey, Dominique, hi, Reshma. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about what we be with this, what we can choose with this, what tools we can use to, to outcreate all of this, everything that's changing. Um, for me personally, this doesn't feel very different than my daily life. Hey, how are you? Um, and I'm not normal. And one of the things I realized about the way I've created my life is I've created my life based on quicksand. And what I mean by that is that I got pretty early on that things change all the time and that I change my mind all the time and that I want to do different things all the time and that markets, I got early that things are different all the time. And that's what I mean by creating on quicksand, um, which, which just segueing over into a relationship comment made me look at having a relationship and going, okay, so I change so quickly and so fast. Is a relationship even possible for me? Because I know a lot of you with this, with all the things that are changing, are really even looking at like, do I actually even want to be in this relationship? Now I'm with this person 24-7. Do I even want to do this anymore? I don't. I don't. How do I get out? So anyway, but, but what's occurring now in the world is that the quicksand that we actually have um, lived on is becoming super fucking real. Let's put that in air quotes for a second, right? Like everybody is now on the same sort of quicksand. Um, Miss Sarah. So, so antidotes to uncertainty. The first antidote that I am, am using myself is to create my face off. Now, what was really interesting before the, the two or three months before this virus outbreak was that creating classes and stuff like that was incredibly hard. Um, you, we would create something and we would put something out into the world and like it would do nothing. Like there was a series of classes where I had zero registrations, live and online. What's interesting since the virus has, has broke and we've actually gotten the information is that what I'm creating is actually doing something. And what all of us have to look at now, and, and what, I'm, what I'm creating is doing something, and I've had to pivot within those creations to make them actually work. And so right now a pivot is required for all of us. And some of you guys have jobs, some of you guys have businesses, some of you guys have however it is that you make money. And for some of you, this isn't affecting that at all. For me, actually, my, my income's gone up, which is really incredible. Um, but for some people, their income's gone away. And so there's, there's pivots required from all of us. And that's what I mean by create your face off. Like take what it is that you have done and note that and go, okay, cool. Is that working right now? And look at all the different possible things that you could choose right now or use all the capacities that you have that you could use right now in this time to create something new. 
and begin just like creating in all of those directions. So for example, in my business, the way this is showing up is I am like rebranding myself. So I'm taking myself through a whole incredible process that's reconfiguring the website. I'm rebuilding pages. I'm building new courses. I'm looking at, um, Jesus, I don't even know what else I'm doing. I feel like I'm doing so many things. Oh, I'm building two new businesses. I'm looking at what the future will be with all of this. And hi, Mara. Hey, Tanya. Um, and I see your comments. And so some of them I'm going to go back to just so you know. So don't stop commenting. I love it. Hi, Janine. And I'm building two new businesses. So I'm, I'm putting a lot of um, uh, ground level energy into a lot of different things. Because what I'm doing is I'm looking at the future and where this is going to leave a lot of people. Um, where are corporations' heads going to be at? Uh, where are individuals' heads going to be at? Is there anything I can create now to position myself for what's going to be coming down the line with all of this economic change. So that's those are the questions I'm looking at. And for those of you guys that are interested in this process I'm taking myself through, I'm doing a five days for 50 bucks, $10 a day, you can come revenue stream creation with me. So you can go to my website, crystaljoycrawford.com and just scroll down on the homepage and you'll find the registration link for that, but it starts tomorrow. So we're going to take everybody that comes on the call and look at their things and go and extrapolate and brainstorm on different ways that you could, yes, you just signed up. That's awesome. Different ways that you could take advantage of the way that I'm thinking about things. But that is my first antidote to uncertainty is to create my face off. It's to look at the future and go, okay, what do I know about what's coming and how can I position myself to best take advantage of it? Number one. And number two, um, how can I use what's occurring now to create things that will contribute to people? So those two things right now are shaping everything that's coming out of my world. And um, it's ending up, it's resulting in a lot more revenue and, it's, and, uh, and I'm slammed. I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not missing things to do. So if you are, if you're bored or if you don't have enough going on, that's going to be where you can start to create shit. Because the thing to know about yourself is that you are an obsessive compulsive creator, you're OCC. So if you are not obsessively compulsively creating the future, you will obsessively compulsively create crap. You'll create crap in your relationships. You'll create crap with your family. Um, <laughs> yeah, so many people I know are creating more than ever. That's amazing. So you just got to get that about yourself that you're obsessive and you need to be creating things that actually create the future. Otherwise, you're going to create problems. Okay, so let me go back here and scroll up and see some of these comments. So thank you so much for all your fun comments. Um, Reshma said, I struggle constantly with people being like, I have your back. And the moment I don't do things that they want, they don't have my back. Oh, sorry. I'm like trying to figure out YouTube in the comments. Okay. Uncertainty with people. How does one deal with it? Um, yeah, that's just like... The thing about people, antidotes to uncertainty with people. The greatest antidote to uncertainty with people is not going into projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections. So people in situations will present in a certain way, right? This virus is being presented in a certain way in the media. People will present themselves in a certain way to you. The spouses, potential spouses. Um, what, what happens in a marriage, for example, is, when it starts to fall apart, is at some point the dream and the image that you guys presented to each other fell apart, and then we started judging each other, and now the relationship's already over and we're trying to get out, right? That's what happens in a marriage or a relationship that's over. It's like at some point that fantasy image got destroyed by something someone did. And then you realize what the person really is and you you have judgment about it or they have judgment about themselves and then the judgment piles up and then the relationship's over and that's how that works. But so people always present in a way that they think is going to be favorable, whether they're dating you or they want to work with you or whatever. And we all do that. And so what has to happen for us not to be blindsided by what people really are is we have to be aware. We have to be aware right up at the front instead of projecting and expecting onto these people that what they say is what they're gonna deliver or what I wish would happen will occur. That's all projections and expectations, right? We have to actually get out of projections and expectations into awareness. 
So for those of you guys that this is relevant for, that book, Projections, Expectations, Separations, Judgments, and Rejections, is a fucking game changer. And if you, dif- you have, if you deal with difficult relationships or you have difficulty with people, that book and Living Beyond Distraction, those two books will change your world. And you can find them on crystaljoycrawford.com slash my favorite things. Although I know some of you have them, so it's about studying them. <laughs> right? So those, those are probably my two people skills books. All right, cool. I'm going to go back here a little bit. Some of you are having epic creation parties. Is relationship marriage possible like that? Uh, yes, I'm having it. Um, what else here? Okay, cool. Cool. So, so my first antidote to uncertainty is to create my face off. <laughs> Trevor, yes, that's going to save your life. Um, here's the other thing, guys, and that is that we are incredibly, incredibly living beyond distraction and project Pez Jr. Projection, expectation, separation, judgment, and rejection. Um, so Pez Jr. and Living Beyond Distraction, you can find them on crystaljoycrawford.com slash my favorite things. I think Living Beyond Distraction on that page is missing its little thumbnail, but the links are still there. So you can go buy those there. Uh, you can get the Kindle version, which is, I have no patience, so I buy Kindle. Or you can get the hardcover there on that website. All right, cool. The class starts tomorrow for revenue stream creation. Okay, cool. I can't stay on topic on a live video. It's impossible. <laughs> the thing that I was saying was, um, what was I saying? Antidotes to uncertainty. So it's really, 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 really fucking important to remember how psychic you are. Now, I didn't hear about psychic until access consciousness. Access consciousness posits, posits and says, what if 99.9999999% of all your thoughts, all your feelings, all your emotions aren't yours? What if? Is it possible? Is it possible that you could be energy and space and consciousness with a lot of awareness and 99.9999999% of everything you feel and think isn't yours? And when I first heard this, it like it was like that emoji with the head blown off. It was like fucking mind blown. I was like, what the fuck? Because for me, in the beginning, I was all thoughts, all feelings, and all emotions. In fact, that's how my family functions. In fact, in my family, if you are, if you are not putting forth into the world how you really are, and you're just happy all the time, then you're being fake. And... So thoughts and feelings and emotions in my world and the way I grew up was like the valuable product. Thinking and feeling were like the things that you do to prove that you're a mentally healthy person. So when I got into access and that was, you know, like put forth, like what if 99.9999999% of all your thoughts, feelings and emotions aren't yours? I was like, mind blown. Like, how is that even possible? Because that's my whole world. I was functioning, I, when I found Access Consciousness, I was like sad all the goddamn time. And I had so many relationship problems. I was like three months separated from my second husband. Um, I was trying to date again, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't repeat the mistakes of the last two marriages. And I had no relationships with my family. And like everything was bad, <laughs> according to me. So, so with this piece of information, I moved forward and I started just using who does it belong to? Hey, who does it belong to? Like, who does this belong to? Who does this belong to? It turned out like almost every single thing in my 24 hour day period, when I asked that question to it, hi, Amy, wasn't mine. It wasn't mine. Who does this belong to? And if it's not yours, like, so if you ask that question and the space gets lighter, so you're overthinking, overthinking and you go, wait, who does this belong to? And it changes. That means it's not yours and you can just return it to sender with consciousness attached. So that was the first thing I discovered is that nothing was mine. The second thing I discovered is that when I use that tool and it didn't change or I would try and try and try and use the tool. The second thing I discovered is that I wanted to hold on to most of it. <laughs> and it took me a few years of using the tools to get to the point where I could actually admit that I wanted to hold on to most of it. And what I would say to those of you guys that are struggling with feeling uncertain, feeling anxious, feeling fear, 
is I would ask you a very bold question. And that is, are you even willing to let that go and, and let it be different? Are you willing to be as different as you could be, which is peace in the face of overwhelming uncertainty? Because what I'm starting to really see is that we, we actually have choices available to us that nobody else has. If you're here and you're listening to these conversations and you're playing with access consciousness tools in any way, you have choices available to you that nobody else does. What they are, only you know. But one of the choices we have available that we don't usually see as a choice is the choice for peace and the choice for ease and the choice for things to actually work. And in the beginning, it didn't feel like a choice to me. That felt like an impossible dream. Like I was going to have to use these goddamn tools for 82 years before that was even a possibility. And I really did have to be diligent and tenacious and work hard with who does it belong to. But then when I did that, and it's what happens as you use that tool aggressively, and I do mean use it aggressively, um, you start to become more space and you, everything starts to be easier no matter what's going on. Now, it gets a little more intense when like the whole world is freaking out. But no matter what's going on, you can create for yourself the sense of space. And so as you do that and you become more space and that gets easier, then what you start to notice is how different you are. Now, I just I think I told the story was like I, w- I just zoomed with my family, my siblings uh, like a week ago. And I haven't zoomed with them ever. We've never done that, actually. But there's five of us. I'm the oldest. And, um, and it was really interesting because I, it's the first time I've talked to them in like the whole time I've been in access. <laughs> so like seven years and this, the, the difference between where we were functioning from was really stark. And I recognized in that moment that I had chosen so far beyond where, where they were not that they were bad people, but just that I had chosen so far beyond that the only thing I had to talk about was how happy I was. <laughs> Everyone was talking about this other stuff and, you know, stuff that was going on. And I, I just sort of shut up during the conversation because, like, the only thing I had to contribute was how happy I was. So somebody finally asked, like, hey, what's going on with you? And I was like, I'm just happy. I was like, my business is working. I'm making money. I'm happy. Like, that's what I, and so it was, it was quiet when I said that. And that's when I recognized, I'm like, this is the difference that I've avoided being for a really long time. Like, it's okay to be that different when you're with other people that celebrate that. But it's not okay to be that when you're with people that don't celebrate that. And that's what's changed for me is I can, not only can I be peace and ease and happiness with close family members that don't choose that, but it's my job personally given to myself to be that because nobody else in the world is showing them that right now. And if they never choose it, that's fine, but I am not going to give that up ever again. And that's what we have to start to look at as people with a different choice. We have to start to look at the responsibility that we actually have to be something different in a world where everybody else is choosing the same. So everything that doesn't allow you to be, know, perceive and receive that and acknowledge the choices that you have that nobody else has, Can you now revoke, recant, rescind, reclaim, renounce, denounce, destroy, and uncreate all of that? Times a gazillion. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, online, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And that incredible statement is called the clearing statement, and you can find out more about it there at theclearingstatement.com if you need to. Um, ah, There was one more thing. Antidotes to uncertainty. So recognizing how different you actually are and taking up the use of a tool that very few other people will use. Um, I guess the third really sort of piggybacks on the one I just said, which is that taking responsibility for what you are. And that is like claiming and owning that you are, you are, by the very fact that you're choosing to be more aware, a leader. And, you know, I love, um, I listen, Shannon O'Hara is another facilitator. A lot of you guys know who she is. I listened to her latest podcast with her husband, Max, on all things coronavirus. So I really recommend that. You can just go to shannonoharadouglas.com. And um, one of the things 
I think it was on that show. It may have been on her call. <laughs> All those things get mashed up. Um, one of the things she talked about and asked us was, do you guys realize the immunity that you actually have to all of this from what you've already chosen. And that's what I mean by being a leader is like, are you claiming how different you are and how immune you actually are to the things that everybody else struggles with? Like I will never struggle with money the way my siblings will struggle. They will have successes with money that I don't have because they also have capacities with money that I haven't chosen. But I will never, ever, ever be broke again. And if it occurs, I will always create. That's what's true about me now. So there's these different things. With my business, for example, I watched a video today from a guy that, uh, really great guy, Donald Miller, in storybrand.com. He's an incredible author, an incredible speaker. I'm studying so much of his material right now from my business. He um, did a video today on four business owners that are, are facing like um, annihilation by economic change and suggested different ways that they could mitigate that change. So, you know, putting together a 30 day plan, a 60 day plan, a 90 day plan, a 120 day plan for their cash flow, and then looking, you know, putting in place stops where, when it gets to this, we have to look at letting people go or da 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 and da 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 da. And I realized like, I have done the exact opposite, and this is claiming and being the leader and the difference that you are, which is I am not going to let this sink me if I can outcreate this, and I can and I will. And my people have not only stayed employed, but their money has gone up during this time. So not dramatically, but it's gone up. So I have a different choice available to me than other people do, and so do you. But are you looking for the choices you have available to you that other people don't have? Are you looking to be the leader that you could be in ease, in space, and in consciousness that you could choose to be? And you can apply that question to anything in your fucking marriage that's tanking, in your relationships, in your business, in money. Are you choosing leadership or are you choosing uncertainty? So there's this, and I guess this is the fourth thing I want to talk about, and we'll sort of wrap it up on this, and that is that What's occurring right now is a gigantic amount of chaos. And there's different periods. I mean, when you look at history, there's been chaos in every form throughout all of history. You know, a war is a huge amount of chaos. Um, there's creative chaos and there's destructive chaos, but let's just lump it into chaos right now. There's wars, there's uh, tsunamis and earthquakes and tornadoes and plagues and you know things that we're dealing with like this right now there's market crashes like the 2008 there's 9-11s there's all the things around the world that i'm not mentioning right now that don't completely disrupt they're disruptors let's put it like that after every major disruptor there is a creative renaissance and i got that from shannon o'hara and i love it i am like adopting that after every single one and so Knowing that that's coming, knowing that, um, you're so welcome, Tanya. I'm so glad to hear that. Knowing that that's coming, knowing that you will either sink or thrive, what will you choose? What are you choosing? And Tanya said she's laid off right now and her, and she's not freaking out and her and the girls are just out creating right at the moment. And that's fucking brilliant. Like that's fucking brilliant. So this chaos thing. So the thing about chaos, the thing about what's occurring right now and throwing everything into chaos is that it is, it can either be something that you see as destructive or it can be something that you see as generative. And one of the tools that we're given in relationships for relationships and for our relationship to anything is to destroy and uncreate that thing every single day. So if you destroy and uncreate your relationship every single day, you'll wake up with somebody new every single morning. If you destroy and create your business every single day, you'll have a new business every single morning. If you destroy and create your money situation every single day, you'll have a new money situation every, you know, new possibilities. Cool. Thank you guys so much. I'm so glad you're creating. Out of work with five kids. Um, not freaking out, out creating. I'm choosing out creation. I'm aware of how much I'm avoiding stepping into being the leader, but let's just do it. Exactly. And that's, that's where we're at, guys. We're at the fuck it, I'm a gift point. Fuck it, I'm a gift. Never mind. 
Like, there's no more time to, like, think about that. There's no more time to ponder it. There's no more time to, like, just not choose. It's just time. Just fuck it. I'm a gift. Okay, fine. I'm a gift. Now what? Now what can we choose? Right? Because that's where we're at. Fuck it. We're gifts. Now what can we create? And so what I was saying about order and chaos is that when, when things are thrown into chaos, that's, like, actually a creative and generative energy if you see it that way. Yes, destroying and uncreating is a form of creation. Yeah. Destruction is a form of creation. If you look at the way the earth functions, the earth doesn't have a point of view about destruction at all. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Like when a tornado hits or a hurricane happens or something dies, right? Like if you look at a forest, for example, the forest floor is littered with dead bodies. Have you guys ever noticed that? Walked through a forest and looked around. You're like, every, everything, pretty much, it looks like for the moment that everything on the forest floor is like dead. But we don't see that when we look at a forest. We just see like crunchy leaves and like sticks and branches and that's, we have different names for them. For us, they're creative elements. But in reality, they're like dead plants littering the forest floor. There's like dead, dead things everywhere. Then you look closer on the forest floor and there's like little green things sprouting up everywhere too. And then you look up and there's like huge green things sprouting up there. Death is a creative element in nature. The only where we've made it, the only place we've made it wrong and bad is in our human reality. And I am going to say human reality because your reality is not a human reality. Your reality is a humanoid reality, which is like you look like humans, but you don't function like humans. You a different kind of being. So, so we are the only one having and taking and buying a point of view that destruction and death is wrong. It's not. It's a creative generative element. However, it's chaotic. So when you choose to start destroying and uncreating your relationship every morning, and that, the way that goes is this. Everything my relationship was yesterday, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Everything I was yesterday, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Everything money was yesterday, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Everything my good ideas were yesterday, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Everything my business was yesterday, it's already different, so fuck it. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pod, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Everything I thought was going to make money. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pod, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. All my good ideas and plans. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pod, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Like, sit with yourself for five minutes and put every goddamn thing you can think of into that clearing and just destroy it and create all of it. And the second part to that is, and what can I choose now? What do I want to create? What do you want to create as your relationship today? What do you want to create as your business today? It's done. It's dead. And it always is, but now it's like so obvious, right? So it's kind of like destroying to get to the goods. Yeah. You're destroying whatever it is you've created so far because all the choices, how we got here was a series of choices. How you got to where you are in your relationship is a series of choices. How you got to where you are right now with money, you got here with through a series of choices. How you got to your business right now is through a series of choices. So how do you get to the next where you want to go? Through a series of choices. So you're destroying and uncreating everything you've made real, significant, defined, fixed, any structure you've used, so that you can have a blank platform from which to create whatever the fuck you want to create now. You get to have a new relationship every single day that you wake up. You get to have a new business every single day that you wake up. You have new living every single day that you wake up. And actually, it's new in every microsecond. But we put it in those terms because it helps us (laughs) comprehend on a micro scale, right? I'm so glad, Trevor. So... So, so it's, it's an interesting wrap up to the episode because I gave you the antidotes to uncertainty are really to embrace the uncertainty and to lean into it and actually create more. <laughs> because when you avoid something, when you avoid it and you don't want it to be uncertain and you want it to be another way, the thing you do is you stick it in place and you don't empower yourself to create beyond it. But when you're just like, yeah, well, fuck it. Everything this is, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shorts, boys, meons. You empower yourself to create something new, no matter what that is. And the something new might be just a new way of being with it. But the something new may have an out loud verbal component. The something new may have a program component if you do things like me. It will show up how it shows up. But what can show up is something new. So 
everywhere you've been resisting, avoiding, and trying not to embrace the uncertainty, which is actually where you thrive. Will you now revoke, recant, rescind, reclaim, renounce, denounce, destroy, and create all that times a gazillion? Right, wrong, get that popcorn online shirt, it's blazing here. I'm going to keep this to 30 minutes because that's like the longest anybody can pay attention to me. I'm certain of it. <laughs> And um, so if you guys want to come join me on the revenue stream creation call and you can do that, it starts tomorrow. You can go to my website, crystaljoycrawford.com, scroll down a little bit. There's a button right there. It's 50 bucks, 10 bucks a day. I would love to play with you. And um, otherwise, and if you got something out of this and you would share this with your friends that you know are struggling, I'd be really grateful. And um, I will see you guys next week. Keep creating. You are amazing and you got this. And I'm so grateful for you.